Okay, now that we've got the, the motor on the workbench, we need to ensure that the, it's properly marked. Now I've marked these already with a pen. Now that I'm going to dismantle the motor, I've marked it here, here, and here. So that when I put it back together, everything goes back together the same way. I'm going to remove the motor first. Uh, snips. To dismantle the motor, what we've got to do is we've got to remove these two screws here, and then that will lift off. We've already moved the brushes, but we've also got to remove the wee nut in here. So there's a couple of, you have a look in there, there's one there, and there's one there. Small, two small grommets, they have to be removed. Let's see. There we go, so we put that aside and now we need to undo these two here. Lift the cap off. Oh. That's the commutator there. Now let's have a look at the colour of this one. Okay, see how black it is? That's causing the jerkiness of the motor. Plus as well as, it is worn. And that's what you can see with the brush in it. That's one of the brush units that came out of it. You can see how it's worn here. Well, it's definitely worn that way, but it's worn this way as well. And you can see with the shape of the commutator, the way that it's worn in here. Technically speaking, this motor needs to be replaced because it's worn far too much. Now I'm going to speak to the customer and advisor uh, that she should need a new motor. But uh, what I'm also going to do, she doesn't have a lot of money, so what I can do is clean that up with my glass fibre pen here. And that will be shining again. I'll just go and get my glass fibre pen. And I'll show you what I mean. That's the glass fibre pen. I clean this up here and you can see the difference. Now you can see the difference of that compared to this, completely different. Now what we also need to do, I'm gonna pull it right out. That's a the bearing, also all the carbon dust has to be blown out with my air compressor. I'm not going to do it in the workshop here because it's going to be dust everywhere. Look at all the dust in here. Now that is wear and tear of the brush units, the carbon deposits. That's why the motor's cutting out. Oh my God. 
as you can see there's tons oh there's a base plate away now as well But yeah, that's the base plate of motor. So you've got quite a few pieces. That's the bottom bit. That's where that plugs in here with the bearing. As when I'm spinning the bearing itself, eh, it's not as smooth as it's supposed to be. And that's most likely what's causing the, the slight movement of the motor, causing the brush in it not to sit 100% exactly in here. And it's slightly wearing to the side. Plus the other bearing on the other side of the motor, which goes on the top side of the motor, it as well is not as smooth as it's supposed to be and that's due to the buildup of carbon going inside the bearings and causing wear and tear over you know the years and years of use so technically speaking this motor should be replaced um, but what I'm going to do in the purpose of the video if it's not as bad as this as you can see this is really bad um, I'm going to clean the commutator uh, I'll blow it out with uh, some air, everything, I will do this outside. So it's it's cleaned up quite well. It's not new, but it's it's definitely better than what it was. So I'm just going to take that back outside and give it a um, a blow with the air compressor. That's the best it's going to be. It's much, very much cleaner. So I just need to put it all back together again. Put a new set of brushes on it. mark in there but it'll be fine it's all the way home now where's my mark again there's my mark there and there's my mark there so that's my mark there and I've also blown out inside the the brush unit housing I'll just join the marks up there's my mark there to go with that mark there now some and watch out some on the other side of this the other side of this bearing if the bearing does come out there will be some springs in behind there so if that does come out with together with the shaft just watch that you've you've got the springs right that's it in everything's fitting nice and neatly all the lines are there I need to put these screws back in do it with your fingers first to make sure you get the thread because sometimes you know that the bolt can go in all directions that's me got it I use an impact driver for this particular Right, all we technically speaking have to do to try the motor out is put a new set of brushes in here, put the dust caps back on and the electric brake, uh, make sure it's spinning nice and smoothly, it's, it's not the best to be honest, uh, I can still feel a wee bit of the bearing rubbing in there, we could remove uh, the bearing and put another bearing in, it just really depends how far the customer's willing to go right so you put this nut back on that will eventually then sit in here you make sure that there's a, a small gap in between you've got a small gap in between the nut and the top of the brush unit housing
and there's all my lines there so Set the torque setting on this. Right, what we're going to do now is put a new set of brushes uh, to the motor. Right, that's us for the new set of brushes and that's us ready to, to try out the motor on the uh, scooter. Alright, that's us now ready to reassemble this motor here on. I've been quite clever, I've, I've marked all this motor here as you can see right up here so I know this is the top, that's how, it's, how I've taken it off. So I'm ready to put it on. Uh, as I say to remember, when you remove the motor out here, there's supposed to be a metal spline in here, which is this bit here. Ensure you put that in there. I usually have it horizontal here, so that it doesn't fall off. So now I need to ensure that that goes in here when I stick it on. I'll just attempt to put it on. Right, that's it on. It's nice and flush. Right, I don't tend to fully tighten it. I just ensure that all the nuts are located properly that's the one at the top That's the one at the bottom. Hey, that's the motor on now. We'll just join the wires together from underneath.
Uh, that's just fitted the motor on, connected it up. What we're going to do is just going to, before we tie everything up, connect everything up and try it and see how we're doing, see if we're working. So the motor's spinning away quite nicely. Whereas before the last thing we switched on, we had an audible beep. Now these brushes are going to wear into the, the clean commutator. That will take um, a few hours for them to wear in there. And that should give the lady, sadly to say it's close to Christmas now. She's not got the funds to buy a new motor. So that's going to do her for six months to a year, maybe a year and a half. Sometimes I've seen these last ones have been done this way. And then she's going to buy, save up and buy a new motor. So I'll just throw this back together again and we'll take it for a test drive. One thing to remember when reattaching the wheel is to ensure that the Woodruff key goes in. That is very important. Right, that's it on. Also what we tend to do is put a bit of thread lock, medium strength thread lock, Do it with your fingers first, don't do it with the impact driver. Let me check the, the torque setting, there you go. That's a nice and tight, the thread lock will tighten the nut and also what I'll do is I'll throw these wee lugs over here. This ensures that it uh, it does break off, it's uh, two is enough. Sorted. And we'll take that for a test drive. That should be fine now for a long time. We'll just tighten that up here. 